Hi, everyone. Welcome to Baruch College Campus High School. My name is Alicia Perez Katz, and I'm the proud principal of Baruch. We're here today to give you a video tour of our school and give you more information. For your questions, please be sure to fill out our online Q&A form and check our regularly updated FAQ document that you'll find on our website under admissions, where we'll answer your questions, both myself, assistant principal, Mr. Kaiser, and our wonderful student leaders at Baruch. I'm gonna to start today's information session with giving you an overview of our school, our philosophy, our vision, our approach to distance learning, and what we hold as valued at Baruch and what makes us unique. You'll then hear from Mr. Kaiser, our assistant principal, who will talk about our special education program at Baruch High School and our program for English language learners. And lastly, you'll have the opportunity to hear from some of our amazing student leaders who have finished four years at Baruch and can really talk about why they value and love our school so much. So let's get started. Who are we? What is our philosophy? As a school, we truly believe that all students have the capacity to work at an honors level and to succeed. To do that, we invest heavily in relationships and our students feeling a sense of belonging in our school community. This is an approach that takes continuous engagement and communication with both our students, our families, and our staff. We believe in all students having voice and centering our instructional approach around group work, collaborative work, student-led discussion, and critical thinking. Teachers plan deeply and collaboratively, having students see connections beyond the curriculum, but also to the world outside of the classroom. Our core values anchor our planning and our approach to instruction. We believe in rigor. And we ask the questions, how do we use the five habits of mind, perspective, connections, significance, evidence, and supposition to challenge and stretch our thinking? So when we talk about rigor, we don't just talk about lots of work and expecting students to do more, but really the depth of thinking. How are students able to explain why they're learning what they're learning? How are they able to look at something critically and examine the power structures that exist in our society and in their own lives? How are students able to remember the content and understand its value in our larger global landscape? We also believe in community. Community is the anchor of our school. We found during hybrid times, our sense of community has become more critical than ever before. Having a strong sense of community gives students a place of belonging. Our advisory program is a core part of our community. Our students will talk about their perspective of advisory. But just a quick overview, it's a four-year program where students stay with the same advisor and the same group of students. This builds community by having people who know you well are your advocates and your support system. In advisory, we have a space for circle discussion, restorative practices, and we engage students in discussion about current events and how they impact their lives. In addition, uh, advisors confer with students about their academic progress and support them in student-led conferences that we hold in the spring. As I mentioned under rigor, real-world connections are a big part of our learning. We strive to ensure that students are learning not in isolation, but in thinking about how it connects to the real world. For an example, in earth science this year, students looked at um, environmental justice, and that's a theme that anchors the curriculum. So not just learning the standards, but also thinking about what's happening with global warming, what's happening within their communities, and how can they be activists in their future with the knowledge that they gain. And lastly, global citizenship. Global citizenship is continuing to help our students become citizens that can enter the 21st century. Now we're looking at what skills they need for online learning as we're finding that's a new component of our new landscape. But we also look at cross collaboration, understanding different cultures, and a focus on equity and anti-racism, which I'll talk about in a moment. In addition to our core values, we have our school-wide beliefs, which anchor how do we see Baruchians as being the people that we wanna be entering our society after they graduate from high school and while they're with us. We ask our students to be empathetic, 
um, what is empathy and talking about developing the skills of empathy and being kind and listening and helping others when needed. We ask our students to be enthusiastic about their learning, uh, to ask questions, to show curiosity, to dig deeper in their knowledge and bring joy into the classroom. And we ask us all to be extraordinary and not excellent. And we chose extraordinary purposefully because extraordinary means you are always seeking to improve yourself and you strive to be your best self every day. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, we talked about equity and anti-racism. And I wanted to take a moment to really highlight this separately because this is a really critically important part of who we are as a school and the work that we're engaged in. As we know in our world, uh, there's more conversation about uh, the Black Lives Matter movement and equity and justice for all groups, but this isn't new. This is something that always must be a critical part of our school discourse and dialogue, and it's something that we're committed to as a school. Uh, we have a parent group where we talk about racism in America to help parents and caregivers come together so that they can have discussions with their children at home. Uh, we hold events school-wide um, supporting the Black Lives Matter movement and other student voices we have town halls where students engage in discussion, and we have our Baruch Equity Team that is a cross-collaborative group of students, teachers, and staff members, and families, and we meet weekly to talk about our goals and how to disseminate them in our school. Our goals this year from our Equity Team are to continue to have town halls and keep student conversation going to increase communication and build on empathy and understanding and also to help all students in our community and adults see the importance of being allies in the work towards being anti-racist and that this is something that impacts all of us regardless of your background or your skin color or your ethnicity, but that we all must support one another in this work. So let's talk about what's happening right now, which is hybrid learning. Um, our approach to hybrid learning is developing, as we all know, because this is a new landscape for all schools. However, there are a few components that we are anchoring our hybrid learning approach in. All lessons, whether hybrid or in person, um, are always anchored with learning targets so students know and understand what they'll be learning that class and also essential questions to anchor them throughout the curriculum in each unit of study. One support for students um, now that they are learning from home is teachers provide a week at a glance. Um, so as an example, you'll see uh, this was for a science class and students see their learning targets for each lesson and they're able to um, know what they'll be learning for the week and check in and understand the scope of their learning and the pacing. And then we have projects. There's an example here of students um, in a math class looking at fixed versus growth mindset. So really trying to find ways that students are able to work um, on project-based learning, even from home, and share their knowledge uh, with one another. Um, our approach this year for hybrid learning, we have an exception model. Uh, all students are learning online through Zoom with their teachers in regular classes that meet four times a week. We have an elective day for all students. Um, that's a day that students can catch up on core academic work, attend their elective courses, their advisory, um, their Spanish classes and PE. And then we have office hours throughout the week where students can get one-on-one -on -one individual support. When our building is open, we provide um, individual support for students in the building with teachers and students continue to learn online. Uh, we hope that we'll be back in the building in person next September. However, if we do need to continue, uh, we are looking at how to continue to provide equity and access for all of our students to learning while at the same time providing as much instruction and engagement as possible. Community building, as I mentioned before, is one of our core values. And uh, one of the things we love to do is take our students on trips, as you can see here. Unfortunately, we haven't been unable to do this during COVID, um, but I wanted to highlight some pictures of just how we come together as a school community. Uh, both of these photos are different points in a student's career. Uh, one is in our ninth grade, where we traditionally take them on a, a full day or overnight trip um, outside of the city, where we engage in community building and connection. Um, and then we also have our advisory trip um, on the Brooklyn and bridge and this is when students were able to celebrate together um, in their junior or senior year and those are every year where they come together and spend time to connect as a community. Um, we still value these uh, core values of community building and our, have our advisory that meets weekly online and find ways to connect and have community. Uh, but we certainly look forward to having many opportunities for our students to go on trips, engage in competition, um, fun competition, mingles, gatherings, uh, both in advisory and also as a school as a whole um, and in their classes. 
Our senior mentor program, which you'll hear about from our students, is another way that we support our ninth graders in transitioning to high school. And lastly, college and career. As a college preparatory high school, a college and career is a focal point for our work from the, from the beginning of high school through the senior year. We definitely focus the younger grades on transition to high school and supporting them in the increased rigor and expectations of being in a college preparatory high school. Uh, however, in their junior year, students begin, um, they take an elective course on the college process. The curriculum is designed by one of our guidance counselors and led by teachers in the school. We utilize Naviance, which is an online program that guides students through all of the components that they need for their college applications and career exploration, in addition to one-on-one um, -on -one counseling with our college advisors and the teachers in the classes support them as well. We have a full-time college counselor that works with all of our senior students and families, and we have 100% of our students who are accepted to post-secondary programs every year. Um, traditionally, again, as these lovely photos show, we go on trips to universities and colleges to expose our students to the different options and possibilities. Um, this year we are unable to do that, but we are still hosting many visits from universities where students can join and speak to representatives. Um, and through our elective, our seniors in the fall as well are receiving one-on-one -on -one support with their applications, getting the materials in, navigating the college process. We truly believe that no student should be left on their own to navigate this and that we will provide the information they need so that all students regardless if you are a family member who was college educated or not who grew up in this country or not all of our students will have the same access and support to find the right fit for them after high school these are just a sampling of some of the universities and colleges our students have gone to in the past. Um, I give a sampling because we don't believe that one university is right for every child. Um, students need to find the right fit for them, the financial uh, right fit, also the culturally right fit, and just um, what works for them. So we have students in CUNYs, SUNYs, uh, private universities all across the country, all across the world, uh, two-year colleges, four-year colleges, um, some students who have you know, gone to arts programs um, and so on and so forth, um, military programs. We work with students and families so that they um, find the fit that's right for them. In order to support the college process, uh, we have a relationship with College Now. Students can take college courses in 11th and 12th grade through our partner, Baruch College. Um, in addition, we have our students, uh, we encourage them to all prepare for the Advanced Regents Diploma, which is the most rigorous diploma that New York State offers. Uh, we have students take four years of STEM that's required in our school along with the access and opportunity for advanced placement courses for students who are interested. Um, students are placed based on interest and availability of courses. We do not screen students for AP courses once they're admitted to our school. So I'm going to end my talk today. Um, I know the biggest question on all of your minds is admissions. We don't have information at this point in time um, around admissions. We are waiting for the Department of Education. In light of COVID-19, we know that there is very little data that we can screen our students around. Um, so we are looking forward to hearing um, how students will have the opportunity to apply to our school. So please check our website so you can learn more as we learn more. We are a part of the diversity and enrollment program and truly believe in trying to ensure that our school is a space that reflects the diversity of New York City and provides opportunity for all types of students to attend our school. Um, so we do set aside a percentage of our seats for students who are low income. Um, they have the opportunity, they 28% last year, and we're looking to rise that number. Uh, it currently reflects a percentage of the district. Again, we'll see how that will change if our enrollment policies do change. Um, and lastly, our special education program, which Mr. Kaiser is going to talk more about. We truly value uh, inclusion in our school, and we do uh, accept students for special education. Uh, within that program, we also have a set aside for students of low income, um, and our special education program seats are separate from our general education seats, but all students attend classes together. Thank you so much for listening. We're sorry we couldn't see you in person. We actually truly do feel that an online video gives access to all families to learn about our school. So we're excited about this new era that COVID does bring in and are always looking to the positive. Please write your questions that you may have in our document online. You'll find a form and we will be answering those in the FAQ. So take a look out for that. Now I'd love to introduce Mr. Kaiser and he's gonna talk about special education. Thank you so much.
Hello, my name is Douglas Kaiser. I'm the assistant principal of Brew College Campus High School. I oversee special ed and I want to talk to you a little bit about the special education at Brew College Campus High School. We have a very robust special education department, mostly ICT programs. On each grade, we have at least two special education teachers, one focused on humanities, one focused on STEM. Our special education teachers are not only special education teachers, they are also content specialists. They know their subjects very well and work tirelessly with their general education co-parts to universally design curriculum that's differentiated for all levels of learners to be successful in our rigorous academic program. Thank you, have a good day.